Hello, this is Morgan Berry, and you're watching the Cooperative Podcast. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special TCP podcast. Here we have a Miss Morgan Berry, so could you introduce yourself, please, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Morgan Berry, and I'm a voice actress and singer and YouTuber. I voice for... I voice for young Ichiro Hiko in The Boy and the Beast. I voice for 13 in My Hero Academia, Inferia in Overlord, Tokaku Azuma in Riddle Story of Devil, and Woo! Yuji in Shonen Maid. <laughs> Impressive resume. So um, I would just like to preface real quick that uh, we tried to get as many fan questions as possible, um, but we tried to keep it nice, clean, and concise. Uh, so I think we have a good amount today, so we're going to just jump right in, and we're going to go with number one, which is, do you have any tips for an expiring VA? Yes. I would say get as much acting experience as you can, and never stop learning, because um, you need to get involved in your school's theater department, take acting class classes or workshops, because even professional voice actors continue to take classes on a weekly basis and so it's very important uh honing your craft is very important and we never stop learning so yeah that's my main tip for you okay so mr reapers you got the document open i want you to take number two please all righty uh when you're voicing johanne i'm gonna butcher these names but it's all right johanne and love live sunshine do you find it difficult to switch between her two person personas Yes, uh, Johanne is all over the place, but the lovely director, Miss Caitlin Glass, does a fabulous job with directing, so she makes it much easier for me. Um, we'll preview a few lines, and she'll help highlight the part of the line where Johanne is speaking in her fallen angel voice, and which parts <laughs> of the line she's speaking in her normal dorky self, because she has different, she has so many different voices she switches to, but it's so much fun. So, so I have fun. a I have an additional question here that I like to ask personally. Um, how do you feel when it comes to uh, a character that has like multiple roles to them? Like they have a sort of uh, multiple personality. Um, because I always found those characters very interesting when it comes to uh, how you convey them. So when it comes to preparing for certain characters and the role is big, how do you tackle it personally? Well, when we go into audition for certain roles in certain shows, mm. the director will give us the information about those characters, their backstory, and what their voice is supposed to sound like. And so I usually, I definitely have to take those in mind. And we have to get into character very fast, though, because um, we're not given too much information before going into the booth. I don't know what role I've got until I actually get into the booth. Really? and start acting and so we're not given too much time to dive into the character right. but yeah but it's um i don't find it too hard um right. it's a lot of fun definitely because i love switching back and forth and it's a challenge but i like the challenge that sounds good. That sounds uh, pretty good that you like to take the challenge and bring your A-game to your work. So we're going to move on to question number three. So, Mr. Chaos, can you take that one, please? Sure. Uh, what was your reaction when you got your first lead role? Uh, hold on one second. <laughs> mm-hmm. Take your time. Okay, sorry. Oh, okay. My first lead role was Tokaku Azuma in Riddle Story of Devil, and I freaked out uh, when I realized I got the part, um, or when Funimation asked me for my availability, you know, um, how often I would be able to come in and record. I knew I got a role in that moment. I knew I got a role in the show, but they didn't specify which role I got, because you don't find out until you get into the booth. So I was freaking out that whole weekend, just waiting to go in to record, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what role did I get? Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, I I knew it was for the show, because I, I just auditioned for it, and right. the message said, recording with Caitlin, and so, and I knew she was the one, you know, she was the one that cast the show, and so I knew it was for that show. Mm. But I was freaking out that whole weekend, thinking, oh my gosh, did I get the role I wanted? Because I wanted to voice for Tokaku so badly, and I was, um, so yeah, I didn't find out until I got into the booth. And Caitlin, I got right into the 
studio and Caitlin gave me a huge hug and she said, you did it, congrats. And I was like, okay. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Just started I still didn't know that I got the role of Tokaku. In that moment, I knew I got a role, but I was like, what is it? And, and so, because she didn't say. And so I was just like, thank you. And then I walked back to the booth and I, because I still didn't know which role she was referring to. Mm. And I went up to the sound engineer and I was like, hey, uh, uh, what am I recording for? Who am I voicing for? And he goes, oh, you're um, voicing for the girl with the blue hair. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> then, oh my God. Gosh, that just made my life, you guys. So, yeah, that's when I knew. <laughs> yeah, because I see on your profile until then, it looks like you voice a lot of side characters, so that must have been huge. Yeah, I was really excited. It, um, I Yeah, that was my first lead character role, and it was only, wow, five months after I started voice acting. That's pretty crazy. That's impressive. Thanks. It is, it really is. Thank you. So we wanted to move on to the next one. I'll take this one. What was your reaction when you first got cast in Tokyo Ghoul? Ooh, guys. Y'all, I freaked out. Okay. <laughs> funny, funny story. You know, funny story. Right. I was on break, uh, and mm. I was just chilling in the lobby. Just chilling. Um, it, was, it was, well, actually, it was during one of my Riddle Story of Devil sessions. I was just chilling in the lobby. And I overheard Mike McFarland, and he was talking, and he was, I think he was talking with Monica Real. And he was saying, yeah, there's this one character in Tokyo ESP. We're not sure if it's a boy or a girl. We'll probably just have Morgan do it. And I looked, I looked up, and I was like, wait, what? Guys, because I, I was a huge fan of Tokyo Ghoul. Still am, so I was freaking out. I was like, because that was the, oh, yeah, that was the one show I knew he was directing. And so when he said that, I was thinking, wait, is this for Tokyo Ghoul? And he's like, yeah, come on back. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so he walked me back to his booth. Mm. And he's like, so uh, have you uh, have you seen Tokyo Ghoul? And I was thinking, have I seen Tokyo Ghoul? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm a little obsessed. I mean, <laughs> but I have to keep my cool, though, right? I had to keep my cool. So I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen Tokyo Ghoul. Yeah, you know, I've seen a few of them. Yeah. I was freaking out on the inside, though, y'all. So that was a great moment. <laughs> I'm so sure. since you're a big Tokyo Ghoul fan, I just wonder, uh, have you ever had the pleasure to meet Mr. Austin Tindall? <laughs> Can yes, yeah, so we've uh, guested at a few cons together, and he is such a nice guy, super fun, super friendly. He is a blast to have at conventions, so well, if you guys have a chance, we invite actually, him to a con. I actually <laughs> somewhat stumbled into him a little bit on Twitter, and uh, he agreed to do an, an interview with us another day. So we're going to actually get to meet him kind of, you know, socially. Nice. So that's going to be interesting. Oh, yeah. He's great. <laughs> yeah. I, if he's personally uh, really great, uh, I would not mind having him on. I think it would be a great experience uh, to talk to many diverse people uh, that yeah. come from the realm of voice acting. I think that a lot of insightful stuff comes from that department of people meeting so many diverse people and having them on board. So uh, I think that's pretty cool to see. So we're going to go to the next question right now. So Mr. Konecki, could you read that off, please? That is the voice acting question. Other than voice acting, what else do you enjoy doing? I love singing. <laughs> I love singing and writing songs. And I actually... Um, I have a song on iTunes right now. It's called Fearless. And it definitely comes from a special place in my heart. Mm. Um, the lyrics are very deep. <laughs> <laughs> I I put a lot of heart into my lyrics. And honestly, I feel like that's the most important part besides the sound of it. <laughs> right. But I mean, because lyrics really do matter. And I, man, I poured my heart into that song. But um yeah, it's something I enjoy doing. I love singing and writing, and I do that to relax throughout the day. I know you mentioned you had, like, a YouTube channel. Is uh, most of what you do on there, like, song covers or something? Yes, it's pr hmm. practically all song covers, and I do video blogs every now and then. Yeah, oh. but my YouTube, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it sounds like it. <laughs> all right, so we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, Mr. Reapers, could you take that, please? All right. What are some challenges you face when voicing for a character? I've been acting for a long time now, since I was 12. And so I have a lot of experience in that area. But it's much harder to act when you have to match the mouth flaps to the animation. 
<laughs> um, but it's a huge blessing when your character's mouth can't be seen. Like with my character 13 in My Hero Academia. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge mainly with the mouth flaps, but with mm. my acting experience, it definitely helps. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, because, yeah, experience, uh, people were telling us about that a lot, uh, especially uh, just getting experience from others, Ooh. other popular voice actors that they may know. Uh, people said they take notes. Uh, people also said that they also like to get in other forms of voice acting, whether it's doing acting for anime or video games or something that requires something a little bit more physical. Um, I think that is pretty much awesome to see. Uh, so... We're going to move on to the next question, which is the next one. Your favorite role. So what is your favorite role that you have voice acted in such far? Tokaku Azuma from Riddle Story of Devil. Hands down, yes. my favorite role mm. to voice for. I love her. She's so cool. And I've always wanted to voice for a strong female character. And she is so stoic in her heroic and i love it plus she was my first lead character so she holds a special place in my heart <laughs> <laughs> it's always the first ones that are the most special ones so yeah we're gonna move on to the next one what is the hardest character you ever voiced for Johanne in Love Live sunshine she's one of the hardest characters because the, the mouth flaps are all over the place <laughs> This is a great show. It's wonderful. Mm. But the mouth flaps are very specific. Um, you see the vowels. And so the O shape in the mouth. We right. have to switch around the script quite often in order to place the words correctly mm. in order to make it look accurate. And so, oh, man, one episode could take us uh, five hours. It's really... it's. She's the most difficult character I've ever worked on, but she's also a lot of fun. And, you know, this it's a challenge, but mm. I'm growing from it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so what is your funniest moment in the booth? Um, I would like to know this personally because I always <laughs> like some funny stories, to be honest. <laughs> okay, well, there are, man, there's so many funny moments in the booth. I mean, one example being when an actor leaves a bomb in the booth. And when I say bomb, I don't mean an actual bomb. <laughs> when oh, okay. I say bomb, I mean a, like a joke. They record a joke so that when the next actor comes into the booth, they are totally thrown off. Like, you know, they're, they're behind and they hear the actor before them. They hear the lines that they hear the cues from the previous actors. Mm. And sometimes instead of saying our lines, we will say a joke or we'll say something totally out of character, but it matches the flaps. And so it takes the next actor by surprise. And it's just the, the greatest thing ever. I left a joke <laughs> when I was recording for Overlord. Mm. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this right now. So, yeah. We don't want no uh, oh, yeah. Funimation I, people coming yes. after us. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to... Real NDA information, obviously. Right. Um, the, yeah. That role's already been announced. But oh, okay. I was thinking about the specific blooper because I made a joke about Trump. And oh. so I'm not even, even sure if I'm allowed to say it, honestly. But it was really funny. But I mean, mm. make but, anime you know what? Let's, I will tell <laughs> yes. You're going you to tell it? Again. Oh. <laughs> yes. Okay. So one time. Okay. Well, actually, okay, you know what? I got a funnier story that's a little more appropriate. Okay, so <laughs> what happened was Rico, oh, he's another actor at Funimation. He got stuck in the booth. The handle broke off, and he could not get out of the booth. <laughs> so, uh, yes. <laughs> so hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look up some of the tweets and read them for you guys. So pause for a second. Oh, oh God, I he was a prisoner of war in his own booth. It was great. <laughs> his own booth. And I took screenshots of those great tweets that everyone was tweeting about it at the studio. So hold up one sec. Feel free to cut out this silence. from the. I, I, I must <laughs> ask, just to make conversation while you look this up, uh, did you take any pictures? Oh, my gosh, yes. He took off <laughs> his shirt. He took off his shirt in the booth just went ape like it was great okay 
Oh my god. The ambulance was called. Maybe. The firefighters <laughs> All right. So, okay, so, okay, I'm going to start the story from the beginning. Here we go. Mm. So, here we are, you know, Funimation. Rico is recording for a role. And, you know, they're like, oh, they're done recording, or, and, you know, he's going to get out of the booth, right? He's going to step out. He's just going to turn the handle. Well, the handle fell off. It just ripped off of the door. So he was stuck. He could not get out of the booth. And so, oh my gosh, a bunch of the directors were, were tweeting. Um, IU, she's one of the directors and voice actors at Funimation. She was tweeting, the door handle in Studio D just broke, and Rico is literally stuck in the booth. Uh, and she posted a photo on Twitter of him. Took off his shirt and was just standing on the stool, just lifting his arms in the air. He looked like Tarzan. Uh. <laughs> and I was just tweeting and we lost him hashtag free rico that was great. hashtag free rico free him and she's posting these photos and then josh Greeley gets in on the twitter action and says there's something in the booth with rico now pray for him hashtag free rico. and then everyone showed up to take Everyone showed up to take pictures of him in the booth, and they're saying, "Oh my gosh, Rico's trapped!" Hashtag free Rico. <laughs> like a zoo animal in there. They're just looking at the exhibit. He looked like a zoo animal. It was great. <laughs> just and then he finally got the door open, and you know, after being in a glass case of emotion, Rico was freed from captivity. It was so great. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Man. Uh... Someone should have threw a tiger tweet. in there. It would have been a fight for supremacy. Looks like a tiger. Y'all, I'm sending you photos. I'm sending yes, you photos please. right now. Yes, please. Oh, boy. All right. I if we're allowed to put this up on the podcast. Free Harambe. God damn it. So... All right, so we're going to move to the next question really quickly. Um, the story. When will you sing another anime song cover on your YouTube? Yes, okay. For those of you who don't know, I'm a cover artist on YouTube, and my YouTube is called The Unknown Songbird. So feel free to look that up and check it out. I'm currently working on quite a few covers, but due to YouTube's robots, many of my covers are being falsely claimed and taken down. So that's an issue that's been occurring since since the beginning of this year and it's something I'm still dealing with so hopefully I'll be able to get things situated enough to upload my new covers I've been working on so yeah stay tuned uh, trust me being a less player I know of the pitfalls of the YouTube mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. oh man it's awful yeah alright so Mr. Chaos could you take the next question please e sure um oh we already did the YouTube thing uh yep. It was the one after that. Uh, ha have yeah, there been any that. voice acting roles that you were very excited f ex excited about? If so, which one? Heck yeah, practically all of them. Okay, <laughs> so here's the thing. I just when I got my first lead role, I was freaking out because that's a big deal, and it, I had only been voice acting for like five months, so that was yeah. a big deal for me. And then when I got that's one moment, and then. When I got cast in My Hero Academia, I flipped out. I didn't know I got the role till I got in the booth. I assumed I was recording background lines. But then when I went in, Colleen was like, so you're voicing 413. And I was like, oh, I actually got a named role? What? <laughs> like, this show was amazing. So I was freaking out when I got cast in it, man. I love this show so much. And I also flipped out with Love, Live, Sunshine. That was another great um, opportunity. So that, was, that made me happy. <laughs> Listeners out there, moments. be sure to watch those shows because they're really good. <laughs> All right, so Mr. Brandon, could you read off the next question, please? I think this man Brandon's is a ghost. Dead. Well, Mr. Reapers, could you take his place? Sure. Uh, are there any challenge and challenges in voice acting or just acting in general that you feel you have yet to overcome? Uh, well, like I was saying earlier, I've been acting for years, and so I have a lot of experience, but when we get into the booth, we're not given much time to get into character, but I mean, I don't know, I mean, we understand the gist of it, though, we get the background, 
the back background story to the character and the director tells us, all right, so this character is going to sound like this. This is their tragic backstory. This is what they're going through in this particular scene and go. And then we just got to go for it. And we also have to match the mouth flaps. So it's really difficult to do both. But I mean, after doing it for two years, I feel like I'm getting the hang of it. <laughs> mm, that's yeah, that's usual. Uh, when you work your hardest at something, you usually get the hang of it eventually. Um, but that is pretty good. So we're going to move on to the next one. This is, uh, okay, I'll read this one off. How does it feel when you are helping and inspiring people to work for what they want? So I guess what this well, guy means well, is um, voice acting work in general. I mean, it's fun. And I mean, obviously, it's it's a huge blessing to be able to do that, uh, to in inspire people. I, that's what I want to do. I want to encourage people to follow their dreams and to live the life they've always wanted to. I mean, I love being able to encourage people because I mean, there, if I hadn't have reached for my dreams, if I hadn't have take the risk, taken the risk that I did, I wouldn't be where I am today. And so I really, I enjoy encouraging others to do the same because I mean, there's so many uh, examples, so many stories in my life where if I hadn't have taken those specific risks, I wouldn't be where I am now. Um, for example, when it comes to voice acting in general, I just went to a convention. Uh, Todd Habercorn was having a convention called Habercon. And I was like, ooh, cool. I want to I wanna meet Todd. He's one of my favorites. And then I read, you know, I read the article that he posted and he said there was going to be a voice acting competition at his convention. And I thought, cool, I'm an actor. Maybe I'll participate. And then I read further and then it said, if you win, you get an audition at Funimation. Not a role, mm -hmm. an audition. So that still doesn't guarantee a spot at Funimation. It's just right. a step forward. And so I was like, oh, it's worth a shot. And so I participated in the competition and I won. And then I got my first audition at Funimation and eventually I got, got cast. And I was like, what? And so that door opened. And so, but the thing was, I almost got scared when I was at the convention, I almost didn't go through with it. I almost, I told myself, oh no you know what, I'm probably not going to win anyway. Why even bother? I mean, I'm so nervous anyway. I'm shaking. I mean, I don't want to put myself through this, really. So you overcame the doubt. I mean, nah. Is it... Yes, exactly. I overcame the doubt. And I went through with it anyway. And and that's how I got started at Funimation. And, and then later on, I got my first video game role in a, a Nintendo game. Like, what? Like, characters that I was reading for. And I thought to myself, oh, no. I wouldn't fit Murga's voice. No, I I just don't have a deep enough voice for her. I don't think I'm going to sound good. I might as well not even audition for her. But then I was like, you know what? Nah, I'm going to do it. I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I might as well audition for her. And then apparently, apparently they really liked it. So I got cast as Murga, the main villain of Freedom Planet 2. So that was really exciting. I, I did not expect that. But because I, I, I decided to press with it, fears and despite my doubt mm. i i was able to get those roles and man i can't even imagine if if i hadn't have done that if i hadn't have taken those risks and so it means a lot to me to be able to encourage others to, to do the same awesome yeah so uh we're going to move on to the last two questions um this is from a miss alicia rodriguez how long have you been a voiceover actress Two years, but I've been acting since I was 12 years old. So that, that, um, I had, I had prior performing experience before two I started voice acting. Man, that's a, quite a record you got there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks. I feel okay. like I've been able to accomplish a lot, um, in these two years. So I'm really grateful for that. Okay, now we have the final question. This is from me. Uh, I wanted to ask, how does it feel working at Funimation? It's a lot of fun. I get to, to work with great people. Um, man, Caitlin Glass is one of my favorite directors to work with. And all of them are great, but man, I love Caitlin. She's a sweetheart. And, <laughs> you know, when it, she she's the one that gave me my first lead role. Mm. And so... You know, I was still new to voice acting, but she, man, she was so encouraging.
encouraging and so supportive. And so I really, I really want to thank her for that. I admire her so much. And she, she's an incredible director. And so that was a great experience. And, and Mike McFarland gave me my first film role in The Boy and the Beast. And that was a Mamoru Hosoda film. And that, wow, one of my favorite directors. So it was an honor to be a part of that movie. And he was the one that cast me in it. So I've gotten a lot lot of great opportunities to work with great directors and you know Funimation is a lot like like a family I mean it's wonderful to be able to work with them that's good to hear that's awesome I mean it's great to you know love your job yeah Yeah. people you work with it's always good yeah especially Mm -hmm. uh, Funimation they are uh, they do some stuff that I really enjoyed like uh, they do a lot of dubs um, that I really appreciate. I think they do uh, some of the DBZ dubs, if I'm not too mistaken. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I love All it. of them. <laughs> I, I freaking love it. Yeah, they've done some of my favorite dubs. So, like the uh, Full Metal Alchemist dubs, stuff like that. Really huge fan of that. Oh, same here. Oh, most yes, definitely. that's my favorite. <laughs> so, we are going to close off with sign off. So, uh, Miss Morgan Berry. Uh, hold Barry. up. We got, a, we got Morgan Berry wanted to. Uh, Give us a little theory on Riddle Story of Double. Oh. She had posted ah. in the chat, so we can't we can't leave without her explaining her side. Yes, I need the explanation. All right, I'm yes. gonna read it. I I posted about it on Tumblr, so I'm spoiler just alert. gonna read it word for word for you guys. Yeah, spoiler yes, alert. Yes, spoiler alert. If you if you've not seen Riddle Story of Double yet, uh, skip this portion of the chat because this is a major spoiler alert. But for those of you uh, Riddle Story of Double fans. I have a theory. Okay, so I'm sure we were all really disappointed with the ending. The ending was, <laughs> I'll admit, it was it was crap. Because, I mean, everyone came back to life. What's up with that? Um, but here's my theory. My theory. Okay. Toka, Tokaku had yet to tell Neo her wish after being the last one standing in Class Black, right? But what if she did end up telling Neo her wish? And we just didn't know it. Because um, sometime... One of the episodes, she says, there's something that I want, but it can never come true now. Something that she (laughs) wants. What? What if she wished for Haru's happiness? What if that was her wish? Because that might explain why all the other assassins happened to be alive in the end. Because Haru wanted to be able to give them all their school diplomas at the end. So we can probably assume that she would rather they all lived. Haru is a sweet girl, and she wouldn't wish death on anyone. So not even the assassins that vowed to kill her. So I assume Haru's wish would be for everyone to buy and well. More than likely be for Haru's happiness. So it's all connected. As far as how they all survived, it's anime. Anything's possible. (laughs) So, but, um, yeah... So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much my answer for that. I mean, I feel like that was everyone's concern regarding the shows. Why is everyone alive again? This is crap. Right. <laughs> this is uh, open yeah. to interpretation afterwards. I, I've seen other shows do that where it's like it'll be fairly ambiguous as to how something happened. Or uh, there was another show in particular where somebody... Uh, I won't name the show, but somebody wished for something, and you uh, he pretty much did it in his head, and the other character can oh. telepathically like know what he was wishing for, but he doesn't say it. And something happens later in the show, and you can kind of uh, assume that, you know, what happened there. So it's kind of like his wish was granted in a way. Uh, like I'll just say this. Abrupt endings, they suck. I, yeah. I really hate them. Yeah, or, or, like if you just, not that great. or if you just can't tell what's going on, because I think Evangelion had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or the, or the ending that, to Lost. The ending to Lost. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think it's really interesting in that, and very good that you know, you're so committed to the character that you even have your own theories on, you know, the anime itself i've yeah. you know haven't come across somebody that had, you know would investigate and you know do such research on their own uh their own role and their own character and the whole story of it and i think that's really cool yeah it's it's awesome Thanks. how people get so invested into something like uh ren just brought up evangelion there's a ton of theories about 
Evangelion. It's like yeah, but to hear that the actual voice actor has their own theories, that's yeah. really incredible to me, at least. Yeah, I can appreciate that as well. Shows how committed they are to the character. Right. Mm. Man, I loved, I loved her her character, and I loved the show, and I I am really honored to be a part of it. So we wanted to do uh, something special. I almost forgot to do this before sign offs, but. Uh, what we want you to do now is uh, sort of do an intro in a voice of your favorite character and headline our podcast so I can cut this in the intro in the beginning, simply saying, hey, this is Morgan Berry and you're watching the TCP podcast. Cool. I can do that. Yeah. Type, type it in the chat so I'll know exactly what to say. <laughs> I got you right away. My, right. Mind saying it in cool. a Tokaku voice because I did like that preview. Thank you. I love. I was actually thinking about doing that because I love, love Tokaku so much. <laughs> like I said, other than the ending, I like the anime. I, I really enjoyed it. The riddle. There you have it, Miss Burry. Um, the floor is all yours whenever you're ready. All right. Is it a cooperative? Yes. Yes. Cool. Awesome. Just wanted to make sure I pronounced it right. Cool. Here we go. Hello, this is Morgan Berry, and you're watching the Cooperative Podcast. Splendid. Beautiful. Oh, excellent. Thanks. Bravo. <laughs> Applause. So, we're going to do sign-offs right now, so I want you to sort of, uh, Morgan, I want you to plug your social medias so people can follow you, find out what you do, and get more into your work. Cool. Alrighty, well, here's... Um, I am on Twitter, and my Twitter handle is the Morgan Berry. I'm also on the Facebook page called, um, and that's under official Morgan Berry, which is under an unknown songbird. So that's a lot of fun, and I really hope you guys check that out. Awesome. awesome. So we're going to do our outros here. So, Mr. Reapers, where can we find you, man? You can find me on uh, Twitter at uh, Reapers240. That's also my uh, YouTube and Twitch for when I do some fun stuff. Mr. Brandon, can you do your outro, please? Yes, I can. Unfortunately, I have that end. But uh, yeah, I apologize for not talking so much. Uh, I had background noise that I couldn't control. That's fine. But you can find me on Twitter at Arcane Magic 514 no. And that's pretty much it. And also, Morgan, thanks for coming by. Mr. Konecki? You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, and on YouTube under the same name known as Google Order. And yeah, great to have you in the podcast, Morgan Berry. Awesome, Captain, thank you for having me. Captain Chaos, can you do your outro, please? Yep, uh, you can find me on here at TCP. I'm the co-host here, and you can also find me uh, at my YouTube channel, Captain Chaos. I mostly do like, uh, Let's Plays and stuff like that, and you can find me on Twitter as well. Um, and yes, it was awesome having you on, Morgan. You're a really fun person to talk to. Aww, All right. thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so you guys can find me on Twitter at rentoperative underscore. You can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative. Uh, I'm probably going to be working on some stuff, getting this interview edited. And Miss Morgan, I would like to say once again, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, it was fun getting your insight on uh, a lot of things with the voice acting medium. And mm -hmm. I wish you the best in your career going forward also those stories are funny make sure more people get locked in booths just saying <laughs> <laughs> just just rig the booths so they get locked in there <laughs> i see the picture too. I see it. <laughs> oh my god isn't it great <laughs> Ren, Ren, add these in post I, I promise I will. I will. I will add this in the video for you guys to see this man <laughs> 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 oh okay, that's funny that is great. Oh, my God. Um, so we are signing off. This is the TCP Podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this interview. And once again, take care. See you out there in YouTube land. Peace.